One of the scenes in the movie is when Spidey and Sandman end up in the bottom of a big water cavern in New York City. Now with Sam Raimi, uh, the first thing he asks you is, you know, what's the biggest pipe you've ever broke for water? And then the second thing is double that in size. Marco's um, taking some money and Spider-Man's trying to recover the money, but more importantly, he's trying to put an end to Sandman. So it's a more vicious bite than we normally have. So Spidey and Sandman are having this fight about 300 feet above us. So I, can pull, I can pull them all the way around here. Good. How do we sell the first front punch from behind? Look, look what we've I just got to help it out. I can help it out. The, yeah, it's, I just got to I just got to whip it a little more. Need... And they eventually fall down into this water accumulation area we call the cavern or the cesspool depending on what day it is. <laughs> Sandman comes in contact with the water. And so this is where we see what Spider-Man sees, which is the first sign of a weakness of the Sandman where when he gets in contact with water, he starts to turn into mud and his hand is gonna to start to dissolve. All right, let me get you in the down position, please. Let's line you up over the money. Marco has to crawl out of the sewage dregs of Manhattan. More realistically, that he's gonna take the impact of the fall, recover, start to pick himself up, getting ready for battle, then see the money. So I'm gonna say, and money, that's, that's your cue to go. That night, I looked around the set and everybody's like, ooh, man, I sure am glad I'm not church tonight. Look at him. He's soaking wet. The funny thing, we have Marco in a blue arm. We actually won't be pulling a key off that blue. It's, it's just more a reminder to the actor that he's got something there. And actors now are pretty savvy and they're used to dealing with blue screen and it tells them something and it keeps something in their mind. I'm carried and slammed into the grating and then slowly dissolved. The water pressure was just intense. There's just no way to control it, and there's no way to control what happened. What Sam wanted is that uh, he needed a way for, for the Sandman to, to melt away. So we came up with this idea to put this six-foot pipe behind us, and Spider-Man would, uh, would pull back on part of it, and then we would uh, pyrotechnically release the water. What you see behind me way up high is the big dump tanks. 40,000 gallons of water in one shot. And this is the most water dumped on one particular scene. So we're kind of setting a record here. With the six foot pipe, there's not enough water in the city to make this gag happen. So what we do is we put in the middle of it what we call a restrictor plate. And we can take the restrictor plates and make them bigger or smaller depending on whether they want the waters to be three inches thick or as much as a foot thick. What you don't see here is all the tests that we've done. When we were testing it, we, of course, we tested it at my shop for, for several weeks and uh, had some, uh, some great moments with that, knocking down fences, pushing cars around. Camera's rolling! Rolling! When the construction department started erecting the set, we pretty much said, look, this is a force that we're going to take against your wall and then they will build it according to our specs. The pipe just shifts back. How they did with this cable here, lock it into that bracket. We go around it, suck it back to it, from the surge, okay? Because it actually moved a foot back on Saturday. It's amazing how much force is here. But along with just water breaking out, what we have to do is we have to design that big pipe so it explodes and breaks away and does not hurt anybody. We'll attach cables to all those pieces that are coming apart. That way we know exactly where all those pieces are going. And that's the safety part of it. It looks great, but we know what's gonna happen in the end. People may think of it all being CGI or computer generated images, but the actual people and the elements are, are actually human beings performing that action. So we take safety as the utmost priority. I've asked for a little uh, wire tie breakaway so it gets hit, then it'll get pushed up, goes up there and then we hang on to it with a counterweight. So it just floats up there 
we work real close with the digital effects uh, group so that we're not overlapping and then we decide through a uh, series of meetings what's best for the shot. In this case actually, visual effects in a way takes a back seat. John Fraser and his team set up the whole event and it's covered with more than eight cameras actually in this case because there were a couple different takes. We're going to set everything up just, everything before, the um, just before the water is uh, released and we'll be staying dry as long as we can. So let's slide this back on. I just want to see what we can see as far as the dial. Uh, I can't see the focus at all. You can only see the arrows. Just the arrows? You can't see the focus at all. Okay. So we're going to have to set the focus and then close it up. Yeah. We'll have to know what the focus is exactly. Okay. Yeah. We got to make sure the focus and iris are set. Keep our fingers crossed and uh, <laughs> make sure it all goes like we planned. Put your body on the left side here. All right, good. We're good? And then what we do in visual effects is we know we have to put a CG Sandman in here because the dump is just too big, it's not safe for a stunt guy to go in. We'll do the big blast and then we work our way down till we get into a, a safe level where an actual person could be in it. Moving forward that way, right there. And get in, get that. We take all the safety precautions. We don't want anybody to get hurt. So the biggest thing is that if you're not involved in the shot, you shouldn't be on the set. Roll cameras, roll it, roll it. Stay here. Stay. I'm going to go in. Three, two, one, go. And so all along, when it's all said and done, you gag like that, you've got 30 guys that have been on that gag for probably two months. So when you do it, you, you really want it to be big, you know. You want to put all the money on the screen.